Good morning, everybody. I guess it's kind of afternoon-ish, huh? So hi, happy afternoon. I hope everybody got food. If you haven't, there's definitely lots. Um, thank you for coming to this information session, for the most part, on the Clarion competition. Um, it's myself, Emily Dornblazer. I'm a faculty member in the College of Pharmacy. And uh, Jen Van Dusen, who's a faculty down at College of Medicine. The two of us are sort of organizing the Clarion and bringing it back to UNE. So we're excited to kick this off and bring you guys the information and hope that many of you will decide to join us. So the Clarion competition, we've got, of course, learning objectives because that's what we do as faculty. So the learning objectives for today is really for you guys to be able to understand what is Clarion, why is it important, who can get involved, how do you get involved, and when do you get involved. So we'll walk through a number of the steps for Clarion, what Clarion is. We have a nice video that kind of documents some of the experiences. Um, just to give you some context, the Clarion competition was at UNE for a few years back in the day. So we ran it for three years, and the UNE teams placed nationally in two of those years. So we had a second place uh, team in the last time that we did it. So we are a very competitive school, and we are interested in bringing Clarion back because we think that our students have a lot of strength in this type of competition because we have so much interprofessionalism already. Um, so this is an opportunity for everybody to get involved. So what Clarion is, is it's actually a student-run organization out of the University of Minnesota. So it stands for Clinician Administrator Relationship Improvement Organization, which is a little bit of a stretch for the word Clarion, but I think they made it work. Um, but really, uh, the idea here is that they're trying to make connections between the boots on the ground clinicians and the administrators that oversee health systems and working together to make some organizational change so that we're practicing in an environment that makes sense and has better outcomes for all of our patients. So it's got a lot of different things. There's leadership, network, communication, that we talk business practices as part of the Clarion. So you get a really broad uh, exposure level to many different aspects of healthcare. And that's why it's such a great competition because it really challenges you for the first time, I think, when you're here at UNE, to think super big picture about something and work with other professions to try to tackle those goals. So the case competition is a student-led case competition. University of Minnesota, <clears throat> they're in combination with their students, creates a case. And that case gets disseminated out nationally to schools in January. And so what we'll do is hold a local competition and we'll have you guys tackle that case. So when you tackle the case, you're in teams of four with at least two different health professions. These are the rules that are in place for Clarion. So at least two different health professions. So what we plan on doing is having everybody sign up and we will randomize folks to the teams to ensure that we've got a nice balance of, between, of experience and types of health professions represented on the different teams. And then you get the case and you wanna analyze it from a very big picture perspective. Uh, my favorite story that I've heard of the Clarion is that there were teams a couple years ago when we did it that were researching the tank size of helicopters to understand how much fuel the helicopter could carry and therefore how that impacted the range of the helicopter as they were implementing their solution, which is just like crazy cool to me, mostly because helicopters are cool. But nevertheless, it's those types of things that were challenging you to kind of think about, like, you know, if we're gonna implement this, what is the impact of certain things? How do we know that our helicopters can go do the certain things that we're recommending? So really kind of coming together and forming a nice big plan. Once you form your plan of how to tackle that, you can do a 20 minute presentation to judges. And this is an interprofessional panel of judges that we've collected some uh, expertise from around the surrounding community that you'd present to. So there's a, a couple differences between the national and the local. So I wanna kind of clarify. In January, everybody gets the case from the national group. And we hold a local competition here of all the local UNE folks that are interested in competing. And we will set those teams up and we'll support you as teams. We'll provide a list of faculty mentors in certain areas that you can re resource and reference. Um, and then there'll be a judge selected. So we plan on having three different judging panels and there's probably gonna be a number of students involved. So in order to get everybody an opportunity to present, we'll have three different panels. The top team from each one of those panels will go on to the round two in the afternoon of our day of, of presentations where everyone will be invited then to see the top three from each of the different panels. And the judge from each of those panels will join in the final round 
to judge the top three teams that we had at UNE. So then that winner at the UNE local competition will be fully funded by IPEC to cover airfare, hotel, lodging, and food, and we will transport you to the national competition in Minnesota. So this is an opportunity for you to get to compete nationally, um, and the winning from the local competition is really the funding that you'll get, full funding, to go to nationals and compete. Now, competing at nationals is exciting because there are cash prizes that you and your teammates will be able to split should you win. So there are three cash prizes. First place brings home $7,500. Second place is $5,000. And third place, I believe, is $2,500. So that's pretty awesome. Um, it's your money to win and your money to share amongst yourselves. So that's fun um, and exciting. It also gives you lots of exposure nationally. It gives you an opportunity to see how other people thought about the case. Everybody nationally will be still presenting the same case that you worked on. So we'll be holding our, our competition in March, and you'll go to nationals in April. So you'll have about a month of worth of time to, for you and your group to kind of prepare how you might want to make some changes before you go to nationals. So that's kind of the, the difference between the two case competitions and what it really is. I wanted to kind of play this video for you guys just to get a sense of how students have described the Clarion. Clarion is a student-led group here at the University of Minnesota that really focuses on uh, improving interprofessionalism in healthcare. We work to break down the silos that traditionally keep healthcare professionals apart so we can solve the complex issues that we have in healthcare. The focus of the Clarion case competition is really systems-based, so we look at really big issues that are timely and relevant today in healthcare. Uh, this year the case is centered on the opioid crisis. We've had cases that center around mental health issues, childhood obesity, rural health care. The cases we have are things that happen in the real world and it's different from a classroom example that, you know, you might do in 20 minutes. This is requires a lot more research and understanding, and I think um, it's definitely a valuable experience. When you see a problem, it's easy to focus on kind of the first step of like, why did this happen? And then go to, oh, it's because of this. But in reality, Clarion taught us to dig deeper into those issues and kind of get to the core issue of a problem to really come up with a solution that'll have some longevity. I come from an immigrant background and I know, you know what it feels like to be on the receiving end of care that is broken. And so one thing that I always wanted to focus on during my pharmacy school career was to learn what I can do differently, what I can contribute to the team and work with other people to avoid you know, having people feel that way. That is the biggest, I think, takeaway point for me to actually practice making decisions together and listening to other disciplines at the very beginning of um, one's journey, education journey, is, uh, in my opinion, invaluable. Many times in our careers, we are often asked to go above and beyond uh, the normal boundaries of what our jobs are, to fix a broken process or to provide expertise to a systems implementation. Developing the ability to do that as a student, I think, is a good skill set and frankly uh, uh, something that employers will value that they can trust you to deliver something beyond just the scope of what your job description is. Two of the teams I've spoken with today, when they mention what they're proud of, they've said it's the feasibility of their program. They believe that their program could work and I think that's so cool that coming from just a group of students, that is what uh, the result of the competition is, is people that think they can go out into the world and solve problems. Those for the students involved and hopefully kind of flushes out just what it feels like to be a part of Clarion. Um, in terms of sort of the nitty gritty now, I already talked about why. Beyond cash prizes, um, they alluded to this. This is giving you alternative skills beyond just scope of practice. It's 
how to interface with the systems that you're going to be a part of. So this is very important from the job perspective as well. But I think um, when I talk to students that have done the Clarion, they also talk about it as being one of the most impactful things that they did as students. So who can get involved? It's a very long list. Anybody who's a health profession. And we, we consider this to be very broadly defined. Um, we've also thought about reaching out and talking to folks in the business degree because so much of business drives the systems that we exist within. So everyone is welcome to participate. We're excited to have them. This can be undergraduate students as well that are in health professions practices. So undergraduate nursing, dental hygiene, all of these students that are interested, social work, public health, we want you here. Um, so we want to hear from you and you're a great part of the team. So all of those students can be involved. In order to get involved, if you guys have your phones and I've convinced you that you want to at least sign up, this is not a formal commitment yet, but we would like to hear from you and get a sense of um, who is interested. You can QR code this with your just your iPhone uh, camera because we're so fancy. Um, it should work if you just hold it up to the screen. It should launch our sign up for you. If you've got an iPhone 8 or higher, and I have no idea if, a, if the Android software does it automatically or not, but I'm pretty sure it does. Did it work? Hey, awesome. Yeah, yes. If you're a Cup Scholar, yes, you'll be participating in your first year. If you're a first year Cup Scholar of the two cohorts, then you'll automatically be signed up. But if you're a Cup Scholar and you're the year two, you are not automatically signed up. Do you want to do it then? Yes, please. I think it's helpful. We'll need it anyway because, um, yeah, if you're a Cup Scholar, do it because that will get you in the system and that'll help us with designing the teams. We'll probably input them from Ian as well, but I think it's just helpful for us to get a sense. So you can go ahead and sign up with that. You can launch the code now if you'd like. Um, it's four questions, pretty straightforward for the most part. Um, and I'll, let, I'll give you guys like a minute or two to kind of fill that out if you're interested. OK, so while you're working on that, basically the deadline for sign up is December 13th. So you have until December 13th to complete that or to decide to sign up if you'd like to. So no pressure. It's helpful for us to kind of get it now. But um, this is not a full commitment. What will make you eligible to be randomized to a team is the completion of these courses. These are online modules that are offered. And they're, they're fairly straightforward. It's by the Institute of Healthcare Improvement. And we have included these because it helps make sure that everybody on the team has a sort of equal baseline in terms of their understanding of systems approaches. We've gone through them. They don't take too long, maybe 30 minutes to about an hour for each course. We've identified five courses. And you've got all of the winter break, as well as now, if you'd like to get started. Um, you have until January 13th to complete the courses. So they're online modules. You can click through, and then when you're done, you can take a screenshot of the completion of the course. And the links will be posted on a website that I'll show you so that you don't have to try to capture all of this now. But first, sign up by December 13th, then finish the courses by December 13th, January 13th. Um, and when you're done with uh, completing that, there's a link to a Google folder. When we get the upload that you've finished them, then you're eligible to be randomized to a team. So we plan on randomizing the teams and announcing them on the January 17th meeting date. And that's when we kick it off. That's when we should be able to release the case to everybody. You'll get your team, and it's off to the races. So these are the three big dates, December 13th, January 13th, and January 14th. There is food January, or January 17th. There'll be food again, of course, because we like to feed you. Um, so, so that's the big day when things kick off. And then the local competition will happen on March 6th. So you get from January 17th to March 6th to get together as a team, powwow, divide and conquer, do what you'd like to do, do the research, put your presentation together, and we'll have um, presentations March 6th. If that's a Friday, then really I mean March 7th. Whatever Saturday that is, I'm pretty sure it's the 7th as I'm looking at this now. So the competition is the Saturday, it's March 7th. It'll run from 9 to about 3. There will also be food. And um, you'll get a chance to see the top three presentations in the afternoon, which I think will be kind of fun. So once you compete and we have the national competition, the, or the local competition, national competition is in April. So it's April 17th and 18th. 
and we will take care of helping you to book flights and lodging and food, and you'll be off to the nationals to compete. Okay, so here are my key dates. Um, we've already talked about it. There's the QR code if you missed it. Um, and I would like to demonstrate one more thing. For all of you who need some of those links, I want to just show you how to get there. So go to the UNE main page, under search, type in IPEC, and that's going to bring you to the first link, which is our IPEC page. And under students, you should see a drop down that shows the UNE Interprofessional Case Competition. If you click on that, all of the details and things that I've presented are here for you. So here is the link to sign up. Here is how to get to the basic, those IHA courses. Here is the link to the Google folder for when you're done with those IHI courses. And then here are our dates for the rest of everything. So um, if you've got questions, my email address is there, as well as Jen Van Dusen's. So this is where you go to find any information if you've got questions. But since you're all here live, what questions do you have for me now? Yes. All the third year DPT students will be off on clinical the entire semester. Mm -hmm. So can we still participate if we're not local? That is up to your team, I guess. I think that we've talked about having students that are in our, we've invited our online college. So we'll have folks that might be online in other countries that are eligible to participate. So I wouldn't say no, um, but it might, you might need to have a conversation with your team about how you manage what you contribute. Sorry, can, can you confirm exactly what day in March is the competition? Was it the 6th or the 7th? This, what, is the 7th a Saturday? Yes. It's the 7th. Okay. <laughs> I have to make it yes, sorry. 7th is a Saturday. Any other questions? We wanted to make it the 6th, but we realized that we would have either had to pull you out of class all day, or you would have stayed here till like 11 o'clock at night. So it's afternoon. So we do Saturday. Yeah. Is it, sorry. Okay. Is it morning or afternoon? This one leaves. It's from nine to three on Saturday. Um, well, it's, you could leave at noon. You'll be done. The first round of presentations runs from nine to twelve. So your group will be assigned a slot between nine and twelve o'clock to present in twenty minutes. And then if your team is the one that's selected to go on, then round two kicks off at one thirty on Saturday, and you'd present between one thirty and, and two thirty. And then the finals will get announced at three. Okay. The finalist. Anything else? No. Uh, I've been in I was a coach for uh, four years, but we did the previous microphone. Oh. Microphone. Maybe my bellowing doesn't. Uh... <laughs> I was a coach for the four years that we did this uh, previously, and what I'll say is there's an incredible amount of the growth that goes on both with regards to your um, thinking with health systems as well as an intrinsic growth of learning how to play with others, of learning to compromise, of conflict resolution. Um, you folks, as you get into the groups, it's, it, it isn't easy. This is not easy work that you're going to be doing, um, but good work usually isn't. And it's a great way for you to learn and challenge yourself and put yourself in a position where you can show that you're a motivated worker and learn about things you never thought that you'd be learning before and to challenge yourself and to challenge one another. There's a real a relational component to putting these together. And what I've just found over the years is that the teams who respect one another, and we'll do some conflict resolution as we get, uh, as we get going on this, but the teams who respect one another's opinions and create a strategy by which you can share ideas and figure things out are the ones who ultimately are successful. And that's exactly a real microcosm of what goes on in healthcare overall. So I think this is a great training ground for you. Um, you'll be become an expert in presenting. You'll become an expert in creating PowerPoints. You'll become an expert in learning to make decisions on the fly when, you, when the Q&A goes on. If any of you have seen Shark Tank, um, this is sort of, kind of, sort of like that with a real clinical healthcare bent to it. Um, and, but it's a chance for you to, uh, to really push the boundaries. And that's essentially where healthcare is going these days. There's a lot of disruption going on in your industry. 
And so as a result of it, that ability to connect with audiences and to bring in new solutions to where the, 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 the industry is going is really going to be imperative of what you guys are going to do when, once you're out there. So again, congratulations for being here and even considering this, but I think this is a, this is a really great growth opportunity. But it, it, I will just say up front, it's not easy work. Um, but it, 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 it's, it's good work and it's important work and it's very emblematic of what you're going to do once you're out there. Just on the heels of that, the IHI courses will give you many of the tools you'll need to, um, to parse the case and, and develop a way to approach the case. So if you don't have it in your curriculum, you'll certainly have it when the IHI courses are done. There will also be people who are designated as faculty mentors um, who will be identified. We'll have them, their names up on the IPEC website. Faculty mentors don't give you the answers. You can't go and say, you know, so how do you think we should do this? But rather, you know, you can use them as consultants and work with them to get some direction and to help, you know, process you thinking about the problems and what are there. So. Faculty are very involved in this as well, but they don't come after you. You need to seek them out, and they will be listed. Cool. Any other questions? I think I'm on. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all for coming, your attendance, your interest. Um, spread the word. If you've got other folks that you think might be interested, that you want to get them involved, I think the more health professions we have, the better, the more uh, perspectives that you can look at a problem, the more you understand all the different nuances. So spread the word. Um, we're happy to have as many people participate as that we can. So um, December 13th, first deadline. Well, I'll be in touch. All right, thanks everybody.